Hear ye, hear ye. We interrupt our weekly adventure for a town hall meeting. This meeting involves a place that I have grown fond of for running and frolicking. What do you think about them putting a bunch of buses in your play area? Doesn't sound ideal. Because that's what they want to do. They want to mess up your play area. Yeah. Listen in. This is what we found out. Residents who wish to address the board are required to state their name, their address, and the agenda item they will be commenting for. Hi, Megan Gray, Six Tower Court. I have a very quick question. Um, was the transportation update discussed during the executive session? This one, tonight? Megan, tonight? Yeah, right now. Yeah. No? Just recently. Oh, okay. no. thank you. Good evening. Uh, A.J. Holcomb, 317 Crown Point Road in West Effort. This is our office. Um, I'd like to first start off with reading an email that I sent to the board the day after the transportation bid that was in May of um, 21. I do not believe anyone on the board received it. They all got rejected. I used the normal email addresses for anyone else that I ever sent anything to West Effort at the WD and they all got came back. I did send it in person to the board office. I'm not sure if anyone received it, but I would like to read it. Dear West Effort board members, it has been a pleasure transporting West Effort students since June of 2017. We began this relationship when we required HAP Hart's transportation department. My understanding is that HAP Hart has been transporting West Effort students for 50 plus years. Due to the increase in fuel wages and other expenses, we have not been able to renew the 22-23 school year at the 1.91 CPI increase. We have always valued the relationship and tried to provide exceptional transportation at an affordable rate. We were informed that the 22-23 school year would be our last year providing transportation to the district. The district has decided to buy its own buses, hire its own drivers, mechanics, and build a facility for the transportation department. The bid was open May 12, 2022 at 2 p.m. Our, our prices increased from last year, not only due to the increase of fuel wages and other expenses, we have also invested heavily in upgrading the fleet of buses, continuing to service the district safely. Considering this is essentially a one-year contract, we will not have the option to renew the for the foreseeable future. We had to adjust our price accordingly. If we knew we were able to sustain the relationship, the price would have been significantly less. We talked about a 73% increase. So when I had this contract for all these years, and last year was 21-22, I'll just give you an idea. I ran the buses for $57,000. A 1.19% increase would not sustain the price of fuel, the driver wages, and those things. So yes, it went up 73%. It was basically a lame duck year. I could only transport the students for one year. I had no future. You can't go to the bank and say, hey, I need a loan for a bus on a one-year contract when you have a five to seven-year payment on the bus. It just doesn't work. They don't allow you to do that. So I do transportation from many, many districts in the area. This would have been the last district they should have tried to privatize. They were 25% 25% less than any district that I do in, in anywhere. We are we have an office in town. That's part of the reason why we do it so cheap. So these numbers that, that are being skewed here today and the 73% increase and all that, this year it went from $57,000 to $97,000 per bus. I'm doing other districts for $75,000. So the prices would have been less, but if I get one year contract, Obviously, your price is going to go up. I have to, you know, put my resources in other places. No sports, no extracurricular activity. I had to save the folks to do other districts. I had to try to grow my business in other districts because I have no future here. If I had a future here, the price would be less. I'd still be doing your sports. I'd still be doing your extracurricular activities. And everything would be done at a very reasonable, affordable price. $137,000 to buy a brand new bus. So if you need that many buses, my calculation is going to cost the district $5 million. You're going to try to build a facility. I can't imagine that's going to cost less than a million dollars. you got to hire all the drivers, and the only way you're going to do that, I guess, is you're going to try to pay more than any other district or any other transportation provider out there. 
We have safety personnel. This is what we do. You talked about keeping the money in the classroom. I think you should try to keep the money in the classroom. Yeah. I, I Amy McKay, 251 Crown Point Road. Um, first, I just want to say thank you for um, having a community meeting like this. I know our board meetings are usually much smaller than this, which <laughs> fewer attendance, sadly. But it's wonderful that you're giving everybody the opportunity to speak on this. So thank you for listening and volunteering your time. Um, first, I wanted to speak on transportation, and it's funny because I was going to say the same thing that Mr. Holcomb said, or the, the representative from Holcomb said, which was in April of 2021 when we announced transportation, um, we were going to be dealing with the same things that transportation companies are dealing with, which is rising costs of fuel, rising costs of parts. Um, but, but I think that, um, and I apologize for using the word, but the word I would use is out of spite of us taking that contract from them, of course we were going to eat it. And we ended up eating it the next year, which raised us 73%. And then we ended up eating it again this year because we're still not prepared. And we are just getting, I think the word was, our conceptual plan today. And this was pitched in April of 2021. So where was this diagram and this conceptual plan when um, it was voted on and approved by, um, presented by Jean and, and voted by our board back in April of 2021? There was no further information Thank you. Has any consideration been to the existing homeowners that live to back up to a bus depot? The, the value of their home is going to drop because who the hell wants to live near a bus depot? You know, so God forbid it's about to leave the neighborhood or even new coming families coming in. Um, the value of the home is going to, you know, just plummet living next to a bus depot. Is that taken into consideration? Your existing taxpayers, people that live there? When you live in Sherwood West, I think nobody lives in Sherwood West, or else you never would even consider this. Um, there's other viable options. I'm worried about the garage cutting into quiet mornings and day-to-day -day daily life. Um, no one deserves to hear 45 of these buses going off and driving around every single morning of every week. I'd also like to say it's pretty unfair to add one of these parking garages to any neighborhood. One day, I came home from work, and I noticed that somebody from my neighborhood had slipped in a piece of paper that was in my door. I went out to, to go grab it, and I saw that it was um, the notification of this proposed plan, and I was shocked, but I was also very disappointed that I had to hear it from someone who lived on my street rather than from the school district itself. The Chelsea Mahaffey Hill. Thank you. 
the ground on which you made this project could have been justifiable, right, 14 months ago, however long ago when you first started thinking about this. But they've certainly shattered now, or have been reversed in the current landscape of the economy, um, and just like the overall sentiment of all of us completely against this decision that you guys have made privately, not publicly, right? And I'm shaking your head. It's kind of hard to see that when some of us have only found about, out about this project by seeing surveyors in the lot across from our homes and had to go out and ask them what they were doing. And so we took it upon ourselves to let everybody else here know, maybe we should get involved a little bit more, right? Oh. My name is Matt Deccan. I live at 940 Doncaster Drive. I'm a lifelong resident of West Effort, West Effort graduate. I also live around the corner, like I said, in Turbo West. I credit those of you who sit on this board. It's a big undertaking, uh, and it's one that you've chosen to take. Prior to today's meeting, I took some time to read your bios on the Board of Ed website, and I found some consistencies. You speak about transparency, communication, and a focus for the highest quality education. All positions, everyone in this room can stand behind. However, I don't see the actions of those words. Have you seen our test scores for math and language arts? Have you seen our district's ranking? I'd say a school budget of $55 million should do a whole lot more. Your focus on busing is taking away from vital funds that could be used for student achievement in math, language arts, vital funds that could be used for building safety, vital funds for building updates, aside from HVAC and other routine upgrades, with a first grader and a sixth grader in this district, I can tell you these buildings look the same way as when I was here. And the proposed plan for this in-house busing and bus terminal here at this middle school won't get us anywhere close to this. The way I look at this, someone on this board or someone in this administration has a pet project and their hidden motive, motivations to build a resume with a project like this at the expense of the taxpayers of this small district. I have first financial and HR burden to the district, incurring drivers, mechanics, insurance, liability. This is the definition of penny wise and pound foolish. For a small district, this is this will be this will become crippling financially. You are making decisions that will impact this township for years to come. This board has increased school taxes each year for the last three years. And I'm supposed to trust you that this plan is gonna save us tax money. Under this, undoing this in five years from now could put this district in financial instability. The fact that there has been no feasibility study made public absolutely shocks me. And it also screams that something's being hidden. Is this the transparency that you talked about in your bios? Because this is your legacy. Impact to students. There has been no study addressing the impact to students of this middle school. There have been numerous public studies about green space and how that correlates with higher test scores. Our middle school already has limited outdoor rec space. I have yet to see the studies that find 45 school buses will correlate to higher test scores. Instead, I have to assume a drastic and very negative impact on this school building, the teachers, and student achievement. And student achievement is why we're all supposed to be here. Noise, pollution levels, they need to be studied. Impact of student walkers need to be evaluated. A traffic study has to be done. Our middle school pickup and drop off locations are already congested. You are making decisions that will impact this district for years. Undoing this in five years from now will be a massive undertaking. Is this the communication style that you talked about in your, in your bios? Because this is going to be your legacy. Impact to established neighborhoods and communities. In today's planning and zoning regulations, it's shocking to me. 
that we could get here without anyone in this neighborhood being officially notified by anyone on the school district or from the township. Those neighbors voted for you to put you on this board spot. And administration, we are the taxpayers. You are making decisions that will impact our home values without care in a plethora, with a, in a town with a plethora of commercial space. The impact will be permanent to residents of this town and it will be for years to come. Without a feasibility study, without a traffic study, without township zoning and planning input, I've requested this information from the township. I talked to people at the township. You're there are no plans. You can just finish up. And the plans don't exist. Is this the transparency and communication that you've been talking about? Because this is your legacy. So what that means is that you're transitioning all this money from the students. I went to West Hebron. You're transitioning from the education to the bus service. And I mean, I went to 18 years at West Hebron, and I don't think the bus service ever affected my education. So I think hopefully. I want to read from the West Deptford Middle School Handbook. Um, I found this on page 34. It says, transportation arrival by automobile. Please arrive in the morning and afternoon at the front entrance of the building. Only the front driving entrance and exit should be used. Deviating from this system can present serious safety hazards. Now, I gotta say, I think that's redundant, because I think any safety hazard is serious. So when you say serious safety hazard, that's, that's a little bit of the Department of Redundancy Department saying they're gonna, not gonna run the buses down Allerton Road. Because if the depot's there, eventually, there's gonna be other people up here and they're gonna be like, well, why don't we just run them out that side? Yep, um, yeah, exactly. I, I, just don't really I disagree with the really bus depot being built. The part where they blow everyone off. Let's go. Stay tuned to see what transpires in this transportation breach of transparency.